I was 21. I was in college. You know, um, many of us feel invincible at that age and at that time in our lives. And, uh, and so, yeah, it was, uh, it was related to golf. Um, I ended up having a herniated disc explosion in my neck, my back, three cracked ribs, vertigo, and so as all at the same time. And, uh, up to that point, I was really pushing all the boundaries, um, in terms of my body and the form, you know, I was, I was working out, you know, seven to 10 times a week during that time in my life. Uh, I was drinking heavily. I was socializing heavily. You weren't uh, drinking like juice. No, it was not. No, no, no. That okay. was like alcohol <laughs> drinking. Okay. Um, there would be some juice in the mornings, but, um, but not like in a, it was like, you know, Jamba juice, you know, okay. <laughs> which I thought was, you know, healthy and stuff. But um, I was like, oh, this counteracts everything. <laughs> <laughs> I can drink all the alcohol in the evening and then Jamba juice in the morning. Yeah. <laughs> we love Jamba juice. So, yes, I mean, yeah, nothing against Jamba juice, but that's, it's, you know, that's not the correct math. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it did not add up. It did not add up. Um, and, uh, you know, eating a lot of inflammatory foods. Uh, I wasn't really sleeping a ton because, you know, I was staying up late and I was getting up early and, you know, I still had, I was double majoring at that time. We were traveling for golf. Uh, so, you know, and, and having an active social life, you know, all these things were going on. I was burning the candle at, at both ends a hundred percent. And I happened to go right before my injury, um, in March, 2010, I, um, I, I went, had a friend introduce me to someone um, who provided a style um, like neuromuscular, basically, uh, mm -hmm. therapy. And and I, I had never heard of this. This was kind of a little bit out there for me at the time of my life. Like now it's like, oh, yeah, of course. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, but of at course that time that it, was, yeah. it was way left field for me. Yeah. And so I went and had a session and the individual was super nice. I mean, very kind. But, you know, uh, part of it was kind of touching like a part of my stomach, right, where I was feeling pain in my stomach. And from that, she's like, oh, you really got to watch out. You're you're about to have a back injury. It's like, I understand my, like, it's on the front, not the back, right? So <laughs> That's I was like, stomach. you don't know what not you're talking about. Not thinking stomach muscles are yeah, tied to the yeah, back, right? Exactly. Yeah. It was my lack of knowledge and awareness and, and just attempting to find a reason for it to be stupid or silly or you know, just because I didn't understand. So it was just the typical response of being afraid of something that I didn't know and I didn't want to hear. And so just letting it go mm -hmm. and just like, oh, she doesn't know what she's talking about. Like, that's ridiculous. She was spot on. And within literally within weeks um, that I had that major injury uh, playing golf. So um, and it completely transformed my entire life trajectory. So it wasn't just a little thing. It was a huge, huge thing. And so I'm grateful it happened, but also, you know, could, could there have been something, you know, my body was telling me over and over and over again that something was going on. And, you know, there are a ton of different ways that I could have listened and chosen a different path, but I just was so oblivious and getting in my own way that something major had to happen and get me to listen. And so I'm sure that there are people listening who have had different types of experiences like that that can relate. And this probably resonates in some way, shape, or form that we just kind of get so much in our own way that we just, you know, something major has to happen in our lives in order for us to be like, oh, yeah, of course. Yeah. But had you listened, maybe your life could have taken the same trajectory and you wouldn't have been hurt as badly. I mean, there's the potential that there would have still been a back injury, but maybe it wouldn't have been as devastating. These are the things that we step back and we look at, right? Yeah. Because your body was signaling. And by that point, there was already damage, but could you have lessened the damage? Mm -hmm. Could you have done something more had you listened to what the wonderful practitioner was telling you and what your body was telling you? And these are the things that when we get to burnout, when we get to overwhelm, if we listen at any stage, we can do something. Mm -hmm. And 
that's where we need to be willing to say, oh, well, I've gone this far. Let's just see it all the way through. Well, no, there's always the point of choice where we can do something. Right. There's always a choice point. Yeah. And recognizing that when, when you say listen to your body, well, there are other aspects like your body holds, at least we feel like your soul, right? And so mm -hmm. when you have your thoughts, your emotions, and then your actual soul and spirit, there are aspects of your body that we might not be listening to, right? Yeah. And that's definitely where I was. Like my injury was not just a physical in injury. Um, thanks to you and understanding at a deeper level, I didn't realize how much uh, the mental burnout I was having, how much emotional burnout I was having, and how much spiritual burnout I was having. And so this, this result of this massive debilitating injury was a byproduct of me not listening to all the areas in my life that were screaming out to say, hey, pay attention. Yeah. And so when we do talk about burnout, it is, it is, it's not just our body yelling at us. Oftentimes, that's because there's something else that's a byproduct of, of, of uh, something that we're feeling. And maybe we are uh, emotionally drained and we don't even really realize it. When, as we talked about in the last one, we're not just getting over things. We're not actually getting through them. We're not taking the time to communicate or talk about it. Um, you know, we're mentally uh, burnt out because we're just taking on too much. We're overthinking. We're in our heads so much. We're not dropping down into our heart and allowing ourselves to actually feel something yeah. and, and, and move through it and just kind of give our, our, our minds a break. Or spiritually, maybe we're just spiritually burnt out. We have, maybe we're frustrated because we don't understand where we fit spiritually, like, or what we feel like we do, but you know, or everyone around us does like, I don't feel the same, you know? And, and, and so, uh, or, you know, Hey, I've, I've felt something for a long time in this one specific faith, but now I, I don't feel called to that anymore. You know? So there's a lot of different forms of what burnout can look like spiritually, emotionally, mentally, and physically.